All right, that should be the last Georgism video, and I'm ready to finally record all the audio. But it's been a long day. Let's look at my favorite channel. Shoot. Everyone's gonna think I copied. In all seriousness, this was on my video a month ago, and I started producing on it three weeks ago. But I'm gonna be not going as into depth with the land value text, but this is kind of your basic beginner's course, and as well as some other beliefs that Mr. B didn't mention. So, what did Winston Churchill, Sun Yat-sen, Milton Freeman, and Ruth Ruby Hayes all had it in common? Well, they were all Georgists. Georgism obviously comes from the progressive area, so you have your progressives and the Bull Moose Party rise up during these ranks, and Georgism is one of those ones that history has kind of forgotten, but later days it's getting repopular because Georgism is a really fantastic ideology. Henry George was an economist who believed the best thing for the people were a land value tax and some other ideas. While Henry George was the first to write these down, it was in fact the brothers Gracchi who actually managed to enable these in Roman policy. And it's unclear whether if George knew this or not, but him and Gracchi have been really close with it, which is why some people are calling them Gracchiism instead of Georgism. But Henry George gets the credit because he's the more modern person and the one to spread it widely in public. Now. As all classical progressivism and classical liberalism believe to fix society, you need to fix the individual, and Georgism agreed with this theory. However, they believe that to fix society, you don't need to fix every single person, but the people who own the lands. As the factory owners are the ones causing problems by polluting, if you tax them heavily with the land value tax, then they are the ones who will fix society because they'll have to sell and diversify the economy, leading to more people owning stuff. This comes with the land value tax, which, as Mr. Beat described perfectly, is the idea that you tax the people who own the land, so undeveloped land still gets taxed, because land is a finite resource that we can't expand or diminish. That means it has a set value, and so you are able to do it. Now. What will all of this money go to? Mainly to help facilitate trade. By adding a land value tax, this allows for economies to diversify and different products to be made, as George theorized, as well as almost social credit-like programs where you can reward people based on their actions with enough money, which is an interesting theory that wasn't heavily supported at the time, but it was a basic form of welfare before it really got kicked off the ground. Now, George was a realist and he didn't believe that land value tax was the only solution. He knew that, of course, most public works and even government itself couldn't afford itself solely on land value tax. So he strongly encouraged Christian organizations to donate. And that was a huge part of his ideology when he was preaching. What happened to Georgism is quite complicated. It fell into obscurity and got split between the socialist and libertarian side of the US. And capitalism was happy because now Georgism is all of a sudden gone with most of its members being divided. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Um, again, yeah, Mr. Beat beat me to it. But again, this is really just a refresher course and it is more of an oversimplification. So yeah. Um, at 2,500 subscribers, I'm gonna do something that I didn't think I was gonna do, but we're gonna do uh, your own wacky ideologies, and I'll explain it in a video. So, subscribe if you wanna see that. And yeah, make sure to like and subscribe, and we have some more things coming. As we stare into Henry George's beautiful face, let's think about one thing. Whether you're gonna pick the video on the left or on the right. YouTube says the one on the left. I'm like that one on the right That looks pretty good So choose which one you want